What's going on, Toe Brigade? Welcome to Super Mario Land. This is a short and sweet Game Boy game that was released in 1989. And, uh, it's not a very long game at all. It's actually only 12 levels. So you can literally beat this game in about a half hour if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, well, you're probably going to take longer. But I know what I'm doing because I've beaten this game numerous times in my life. Uh, this game it looks pretty good for a Game Boy game, I will say. Like, a lot of people like to rag on Game Boy games saying, oh, they don't look good. I think this one's one of the better looking Game Boy games. Of course, Super Mario Land 2, the sequel to this game, looks better than the first. But you know what? You can't complain about a game like this. You can't. Um, this actually branches off uh, later on into the Wario Land series, which is a very beloved series that I wish Nintendo could bring back at some point. But they don't seem to want to acknowledge them. We, li we literally just got a new WarioWare game announced at the, uh, the E3, Nintendo's presentation at E3. You know, they seem to not even acknowledge that Wario Land even exists anymore. And it's really sad because I always thought Wario Land was really unique and cool. But, you know, I've talked about Wario Land quite a bit on this channel, so I don't want to, you know, harp on it too much. But, uh, anyway, Super Mario Land. So, they actually show a demo of the game. Uh, if you stay on the title screen long enough, you know how Game Boy games usually are back in the day. They used to show demos of the gameplay and what it's like if you stayed on the title screen. So, yeah. It's a pretty cool little thing that they do. And uh, no, there's nothing wrong with my audio here. There's actually no music on the title screen. They actually don't even have a theme for it. So anyway, let's get started. So yeah, here's Super Mario Land. Um, So each of the kingdoms that we're in in this land called Sarasa Land uh, has a name. This is the Mirabuto Kingdom based on Egypt. Those triangles that's in the background, what they look like triangles according to this Game Boy graphics, those are actually pyramids. Um, Sarasaland is basically Princess Daisy's home. That's her home. Uh, the funny thing about Sarasaland is that you never really hear it mentioned. Well, you do hear it mentioned sometimes, but Nintendo doesn't really seem to, you know, acknowledge Sarasaland as much as I thought that they probably would. I mean, they always acknowledge the Mushroom Kingdom, Peach's home, but they never seem to acknowledge Sarasaland because... Daisy just branches off into her own, like, type of unique character. She's not, like, Princess Peach, who's all, like, royal and, and formal and everything. She's all sophisticated. No, she's more of, like, a spunky, tomboyish type character, and that's why I like Daisy more. <laughs> anyway, we just got a Starman, and you might notice the Starman's music is not the original Starman theme. It's actually the Can-Can music. So, yeah, that's another thing that they did in this game that never returned again. You get the Can-Can music for the Starman, which is really, really cool. Um, this video will probably be roughly 25 to 30 minutes. This game is really, really short. <laughs> it's kind of up there with Kirby's Dream Land, where it's like a really incredibly short and sweet game. But I, I still like it, though. It's not my favorite Mario game of all time. But, you know, it, it'll it'll do the deal. And we just got a, a Super Ball. That's not a Fire Flower. Um, Super Balls will basically bounce around. Whenever it hits a wall or the ground or something, and it can hit enemies and projectiles and collect coins for you. So, yeah, if you want to do that, well, there you go. I feel like the physics of Mario and Super Mario Land, like, I know I'm not the only person who, who talked about this. The physics of Mario is so weird. I know this is a Game Boy game, but I, I feel like I need to talk about this because it's a recurring thing in this game that causes you to die a lot. So, Mario drops really, really hard whenever he falls from a platform or jump. And it, and it messes me up a lot of the time. It really does. And, like, when you do jump, you don't really have that much control over Mario's movement. It feels really stiff and, like, ugh, I don't like it very much at all. Another thing I didn't acknowledge yet is the fact that, well, if you go to the top door at the end of each level, you'll play a little bonus game to get some 1-ups or a Fire Flower if you have a Mushroom. And also, uh, I didn't mention that the hearts are the one-ups in this game, so they're not represented by mushrooms like they normally are. I guess because limitations, so they couldn't have a different colored mushroom because it would have looked like a regular mushroom according to this game. So they had to do something for one-ups. And yeah, that was a little secret path there. Um, yeah, these temple levels... Have, sometimes they have these little secret elevator platforms that you can find. They're kind of well hidden, though. Also, yeah, um, this is the first of, I think, two, I believe it's two or three temple levels in the game. 
Yeah, I'm counting World 3 2 as well as a temple. So, yeah, there's three of them then. <laughs> I'm counting it as a temple because it has the same music and everything. But, um, yeah. So, each world has three levels, and that's the boss right there. It's a giant sphinx. I don't know the names of these bosses, so don't ask me. <laughs> I, I literally don't. I mean, I know I said I like this game, but I don't come back to it that often, you know, to remember all the names of the enemies. In fact, oh, before I actually get into that, I want to kind of talk about this right here. So, yeah, there's Daisy. Thank you, Mario. Oh, Daisy. And she turns into an enemy. I believe that's a fight or fly. I don't know if that's a fight or fly or not, because what I wanted to talk about in this game is that there's no, almost no recurring Mario enemies in this game. The only recurring Mario enemy that I've noticed that's the same as it was in the other Mario games is the Piranha Plant. They just look different. But, yeah, there's just other, like, random enemies, like exploding Koopas. Like, if you jump on the Koopa, it'll behave like a regular Koopa where it hides in its shell, but then the shell explodes. So, yeah, that's a thing. I mean, who would have thought that we'd ever see an exploding Koopa in a Mario game? I sure as Really? And yeah, you notice, look how fast he dropped when I died there. He didn't even, like, he had no air momentum whatsoever except falling. Like, that was ridiculous how fast he fell. But we got a 1-up there. Every 100 coins is a 1-up, just like in almost every other Mario game. Uh, and also, uh, before I forget to mention this, uh, this is the Muda Kingdom, based on Bermuda, hence all the water. And Bermuda, <laughs> I, I, mean, I said Bermuda, I meant to say the Muda Kingdom has a really catchy theme that I... Really love humming too sometimes because it's so damn good. It really, really is. So damn good. Super Mario Land does have really good music, if anything else. Got two. Okay, so here we go with 2-2. Two, two. Like, okay, I was going to talk about this at the beginning of the project, but you know what? I don't think now is too late. Uh, I was kind of figuring out where I would even put this on my channel because <laughs> this is obviously not a stream, and it's not a collab project. Well, I'll put it in collabs in other videos. And also, I don't even know when I'm going to upload this. I'll probably upload it for Monday's video because I got nothing for Monday, so... That'll probably be when this video will go up on the channel, but yeah. Just a little short little thing, because I got nothing else to do right now. I'm literally in the middle of Mario Party videos. I still got to finish Pokemon Y and all of this other stuff that I'm planning to do in the uh, near future. So, I mean, I got nothing else to do right now, so I figured, you know what? Super Mario Land, why the hell not? It's a game that you can literally beat. It's a pocket, it's a pocket Mario game. And I missed a freaking bonus room for that level. Oh, well. I wasn't expecting to get that one. That one's kind of tricky because those platforms will fall. Not the one at the top, of course, but those one that's kind of look like, uh, whatever, like springs or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this is the third level of the Muda Kingdom. This is an underwater level, and you're in the, I believe this is called the Submarine Popper, but I freaking love this song. Oh my gosh. It's so kick-ass. It gets you pumped. <laughs> and, of course, we get the freaking can, can, can again, because we got a star, man. But, you know, when I first heard the uh, can, can thing for the star, man, uh, music when I first played this, I was like, what the hell? Like, that's not what I usually hear for star, man. Well, I believe, I want to say this was probably, like, my second or third Mario game I played in my lifetime growing up. So, I guess I couldn't have, I guess I wasn't really that surprised at it, but it definitely wasn't what I was expecting. And, uh, yeah, I didn't even mention the story of this game. Why is Mario in this Sarasaland area? Uh, well, basically, the princess that we kind of saw at the end of 1-3, um, she's been captured by an alien named Tatanga who wants to marry her and take over the kingdom with her. Um, so Mario has to go rescue her. So, yeah, that's the story. <laughs> that's literally it. I kind of like how the box art says, uh... It basically says, like, get ready for Mario's biggest adventure yet, or something like that. I think that's what it says on the box, but literally, this this game is, like, 12 levels, so I highly doubt it's the biggest adventure he's gonna have. <laughs> but thanks for, thanks for trying to acknowledge it. 
But yeah, there's the boss of the Muda Kingdom. That was a giant seahorse. I don't know its name, as I said before, so I'm not going to try to remember it. Okay, so we found Daisy again. Maybe we got her this time. And of course we don't. Okay, this is already getting old. <laughs> but then again, you know, you play Super Mario Bros. 1 and it's like, oh, but your princess is in another castle. They say that freaking seven times throughout the game. And it's like, how many times do we have to go through this, Toad? Yeah, Toad's the one who tell us. And if you look at the sprite really close, it looks like he's flipping you off saying, yeah, yeah, fuck you, your princess is in another castle. Like, are you serious? <laughs> Uh, that I always thought that was kind of funny though. But anyway, um, this is the Easton Kingdom based on Easter Island. Hence the uh, modern art heads in the background. Actually, the Pokemon Nose Pass is also based on this modern art. So yeah, there's that. You know, I can't. You know, that's the funny thing about my freaking channel. I cannot seem to go through a game without mentioning Pokemon in some way, shape, and form. Either because someone brings it up in the chat during my streams, or I just have to reference it at some point. I don't know why. I guess because I'm a huge Pokemon fan. I can't help myself, okay? <laughs> so don't worry about it. When you're a big fan of something, you have to reference it <laughs> at times. I mean, of course, I'm a fan of other series. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Mario. That's why it's my it's one of my... Well, it is my most played game series because Mario has the most games I'm going to be doing on the channel. So, of course, naturally, Mario is going to get the most games uh, and streams on the channel. Of course. Uh, this level... This level is kind of long. Yeah, this is a pretty long level, uh, considering. Oh, so I never understood what the whole deal with these, like, rocks that just fall from the sky. Like, what, what, what is all, what is with this? I never understood that. I knew that was gonna happen. I knew that was gonna happen. I had a freaking gut feeling that I was gonna die to one of these freaking rocks. And of course, that's exactly what happened. Ah, oh, come on, see. Ah, oh, gosh. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try to concentrate a little bit here, because <laughs> I don't want to die a third time. Third time will be the charm for this freaking video. Just be patient. There we go. Okay, but we're still not done the level yet. Also, this is the last time in the game you're going to hear this overworld theme. You're not going to hear it anymore. You're not, you're not going to hear this theme anymore in the game. This is it for this theme. 3-1 is the last time you'll hear it. It's pretty catchy, though. Oh, I probably missed... Oh, no, I did... I, I, yeah, I did miss it. <laughs> I thought I could have salvaged that and got the uh, little one-up game, but that's okay. I don't see myself getting a game over. Anyway, who's going to get a game over in Super Mario Land of all games? Okay, so we have another temple. Well, this is more like an underground, but it has the temple theme, so I'm calling it a temple. <laughs> but uh, this level is pretty damn long, too. And apparently these spiders kind of remind me a little bit of Scuttlebugs. You know those yellow and black uh, huge spiders that Mario likes to step on and stuff? Yeah, they kind of remind me of Scuttlebugs, but that's not what they are. And ah, tarantulas! <laughs> Yeah, Tarantula's in the Mario universe, apparently. Oh, oh, crap. Yeah, this is one of the elevator platforms that I never really knew about, but you can go in this pipe up here. Uh, I found this out through Chugga Conroy. Uh, his, his Let's Play exposed that secret. But you can get a lot of coins in here. More coins than you could ever, than you could ever imagine. Yeah, I'm gonna get this mushroom. And this level has a lot of tricky platforming. I kind of suggest, if you want to have safer platforming in the game, don't hold the B button. Like, kind of, like, just take it slow. I, I know, like, most people will play Mario, they would like they like to run and stuff because they don't want to run out of time. But I think in this game, being careful is more... It's more recommended because you can die very easily because of Mario's physics. Very easily. Like I did in 3-1, I died twice <laughs> because of his physics. But we're almost done the game. We got four more levels after this. That's it. We're literally on a sea. 
three, six, eight. We're on the eighth level right now, so we got four more levels to follow, and then we're done. So yeah, as I said, not a long game at all. The kind of that waterfall background kind of gets me a little bit, you know, um, like my eyes kind of like get a little trippy seeing that waterfall effect because it, 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 like you're forced to see it when you're jumping on those platforms. Of course, give me a fire flower. Well, not a fire flower. Give me a Super Bowl flower when I don't freaking need it. Okay, so this is the boss level of the Easton Kingdom. I remember when I first played this game, I had a lot of trouble with 3-3. Like, it's just... There's one section that has a Kaizo block, and I freaking hate it so much. That Kaizo block... <laughs> it was funny because even Chugga Conroy fell victim to it. And I probably will too, because I mentioned it. Yeah, there's a, there's a specific section of this level that has a Kaizo block when you try to jump. That's the one right there oh my gosh <laughs> that's the one oh i freaking knew it i had to freaking open my big ass mouth crap man <laughs> oh my gosh nintendo why did you have to do that to us man why did you oh that was close why did you have to do that to us nintendo you knew exactly what you were doing oh my gosh come on no we're not playing this <laughs> Wow, they start me off right there? Like, checkpoints are really, really generous in this game. Okay, here's the boss. You don't even need to fight this. Well, you actually, you don't need to fight any of the bosses in the game. But I don't really consider that a boss because you can literally, you know, just jump over him. Well, you, as I said, you don't have to fight any of the bosses. But that's probably the least like a boss in the game. Because he doesn't even attack, really. And again. Oh my gosh, Daisy's a tarantula. Oh my gosh. She's a bug. Okay, now I need the flower. Okay, so here's the last area of the game. This is the Chai Kingdom, based on China. And I love this freaking song. It's... Sounds very, very traditional and oriental, and I freaking uh, I love it so much. Uh, one enemy I really hate. Those. Those ninja, those jumping ninjas that... Basically, if you, if you step on them, they'll be stunned for a while, and then they'll get up and start jumping around again, and I freaking despise them. But, like, the gameplay graphics, I never knew what those what those enemies actually were because they don't it doesn't translate too well over to the game boys graphics so i never really knew what that enemy was supposed to be when i first played this but now i know it's supposed to be like some kind of ninja or whatever kind of fitting for the chai kingdom right but yeah we're two levels away from the end once we get through four one we got four two and four three and then the boss and that's it <laughs> Uh, 4-2 is kind of annoying, though, because of a certain section. And while this part is really, really congested, I mean, you got bullet bills, you got these piranha plants coming out of these pipes, you got falling freaking ceiling blocks, that doesn't even match up with what the blocks up there are. For some reason, they have, like, a ceiling, like, a block that falls from the ceiling that doesn't even look like the blocks that's up there, and I think this is timed pretty badly. Okay, there we go. I thought I thought literally there was no way I was going to be able to make it up there because the way those blocks were moving, or those platforms. Oh my gosh. Okay, good. Wow, just throw three of them at you. we go oh 
Okay, here we go with 4-2. This takes place in the more... Basically, it's like in the more mountainous area of the region. I like the little Chinese, you know, pattern that's at the top of the screen that you can see up there. Like, right below the, uh, the stats on the screen with the time and everything. Yeah, it has a, they have the little oriental Chinese pattern that you be seeing, like, on, uh, like, on the sides of buildings and walls and stuff like that. Kinda like that. Actually, Min Min, and, um, from ARMS actually has that, she has that pattern on her, uh, uh, well, then again, that could be Chinese or Japanese. It could be both, because Japanese people use it too. But I think it's more associated with China. Oh, that was close. Okay. But yeah, she she actually has that pattern on her hat. But I tell you, man, the Starman makes that part so much more bearable. But this is the part I was talking about in 4 too that's really annoying. But surprisingly, I didn't even die, so yeah, there's that. Make sure there's no Kaizo block right here. I'm not falling for that again, 3-2. Or 3... Ooh, it, 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 no, it's 3-3, three, three, not 3-2. Three, Okay, we're going to end the game with 13 lives, maybe 12 if we die at some point. But yeah, here's the last level of the game. This takes place in the skies of the Chai Kingdom. So we're, we're pretty much done. We are done. And yeah, no, this game took less than 30 minutes. And I had to cut out a little bit of stuff too, because I had to pause the game a few times. So I cut those pauses out, and uh, it, it took <laughs> about 20 minutes to beat this game. That's it. I just wanted to do something because I got nothing else to do right now. And uh, as I said, this video will probably be up on the channel Monday. So if you see it on Monday, well, then you know. Couldn't get that. Oh, I could have gotten that one up, but I missed it. That's okay. As I said, I'm not getting a game over. I'll die a few times, but I'll never get a game over in Super Mario Land. Ever. Even the hard mode is not that bad. Maybe I'll do the hard mode as a little special. <laughs> Maybe I will. And it's probably a lot like Kirby's hard mode uh, in Dreamland, where it's like certain enemies are just faster and stuff like that, or more aggressive. It's kind of what you can expect. Okay, so we're coming up to the end now. Give you a lot of coins right there for some odd reason. I guess because in, in case you die, you can get a one up. But I don't even think I, I think they even start you past that point. So yeah, get all the coins while you while you're there. Got to be a little careful there. You could get squished if you're not fast enough. But you usually you are fast enough. If you if you have the best good reflexes, then you shouldn't worry about it. Oh yeah, and upcoming is the last enemy in the game. Um. Yeah, these little fists. And there's only two in the entire game. That's it. So yeah, here's the sub, the penultimate boss. It's whatever this is supposed to be. Apparently, according to Chugga Conroy's Let's Play of this game, which was only two videos, that wasn't a cloud. I don't know what that was, but... Anyway, here's the Tonga. This is the final boss. This is it. So all you gotta do is just keep shooting him. That's literally all you have to do. I don't know how many hits he takes... Are you... Just keep shooting him. And you can get points for destroying his big uh, energy boss that he shoots out too. There we go. Literally took less than five, well, less than 10 seconds. Oh, Daisy, Daisy. Thank you, Mario. I know that's, that's not remotely what Daisy would sound like. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, that's it. Your quest is over.
So yeah, they walk into Mario's little airplane. And that's it. They take off and... Also, this credits theme is absolutely amazing. I love this song so much. But yeah, that's Super Mario Land. That's it. That's literally it. Beat the game in less than an hour, in less than 30 minutes. So, uh, yeah, what are my thoughts on this game? Well, it's short. <laughs> it's short. It's still fun, though. It's still fun to go back and play every once in a while. So I can't, I can't knock the game for being short, though. You know, sometimes short games is exactly what you want to play. You know, some people complain that games are too short. And, like, I don't mind short games. Sometimes I don't have the attention span to play a longer game like Breath of the Wild or something. Sometimes I want to play a game that I can beat in, like, three hours or something. You know, a shorter game doesn't always mean bad quality. Apparently, that's what a lot of people think. I don't know why, but it is what it is. Now, if the game is, like, $60, like on the Switch, well, then that's another story. Now, they add content that's different, but... A lot of time, you know, Nintendo adds content later to games, so... I mean, you, you can kind of expect that nowadays with games on the Switch, but it's it's alright, though. You know, with Mario Golf... I wouldn't say Mario Golf really has a set time. Like, you can beat the game. I mean, yeah, it is for the story mode, but that's about it. And there we go. The end. <laughs> We've saved Princess Daisy and defeated Tatanga. Oh, yeah. So, I'm going to see you guys later.